Westfield shopping centers fall 10%. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at an article from commercialrealestate.com.au, originally from the Sydney Morning Herald. It's discussing the fall in valuations for Westfield shopping centers, down by 10%. Now, before we go through this article, let's just jump over here to Google and have a look at the center group's share price. You can see, well, right now it's sitting at $1.92. Back in Feb, well, it was over $3.90. $3.90. So the question I put to you, because we've discussed this in previous videos, we've seen Stockland as the example down here. They've already, last time we looked halfway through last year or early last year, they'd, they'd gotten rid of $500 billion worth of their their centers, their, their shopping regional centers. They were going to cull another $500 billion more. So the question is, has this plunge here, has the market priced in the decrease in value of all of the assets that Westfield or Center Group are holding? What do you think? Because, well, look at this image here, just cordoned off eating areas, less activity. It depends. Here in Brisbane, you know, I went out shopping to to the local Westfield. I don't know why, or we had to get something. And, you know, there was still some activity there, but the coffee shops were closed. You know, other shops were closed. There were people going about. But, you know, we've heard again and again. At the beginning of this year, it seemed to be every episode I was discussing another article about a retailer going under, you know, such and such under voluntary administration, voluntary administration, looking for buyers. And then you've got all the boutique ones that just aren't paying rent. You've got the boutique people who are going under. You've got people who are just leaving. So this has to affect the valuation of this business. And this has to be manifest. It has to manifest in, you'd expect, in like the, the real estate investment trusts. What do you reckon, guys? But let me know your opinion. Let's have a look at this. Do you think it's been priced in? So Westfield Mall owner Centre Group is the latest retail landlord to feel the scourge of the pandemic with the value of its shopping centre portfolio plunging 10% in just six months. Centre Group, the country's largest shop shopping centre owner and manager, said it would confirm the decline when it reported its half-year results on August 25th. But the expected fall in values between December 2019 and June this year was partially due to the estimated impact of the pandemic. The change in values was, was primarily and would, well, sorry, was preliminary and would not affect operating earnings and funds from operations, Centre said. Despite the ongoing pain caused by the pandemic to shareholders and tenants, Centre's chief executive Peter Allen and other key members of the executive team and board will go back to full pay after fee and remunerations were temporary cut in the early stages of the pandemic. The board has reviewed these arrangements and has determined that board fees and fixed remuneration from, for the executive team will revert to the previous levels effective the 1st of August 2020. Mr. Allen's remuneration last year was $7.5 million. The steep decline in the value of Westfield's malls mirrors its rivals' vicinity centres the country's second largest shopping center landlord, which saw a $1.79 billion wipe off, wiped off its exists extensive portfolio from the pandemic. Vicinity, the co-owners of the mega Chadstown Mall in Melbourne, last month reported values across its 60 malls slumped 11.3% over the six months to June 30. So let's, I'll just bring up vicinity share price. We can see here. Okay, so they've shot up recently to a dollar thirty, but we'll pull out to six months, and we can see once again they were at two dollars fifty-one. So they've nearly lost fifty percent of their share value, guys. Fifty percent of their share value. The dividend yields aren't too bad. Twelve point four seven percent. The question is, what's center? Ten percent. The question is, are those yields going to retain? Going to be um, continue? Are they, we're going to see those yields for the foreseeable future if the revenue, sure, the valuations have taken a hit, but will the revenue these centers are making from their tenants, is it going to take a bit of a beating? Because remember, with these centers, a part of it is also dependent on consumer sentiment, on how much people go out there and spend, on how much you spend on your retail knickknacks and afterpay impulse purchases, because they'll get a share of that under their, their arrangements with the tenants. 
So we'll, we'll have to see. Because I think the world is going to change for these retailers, guys. It was every year there'd be an instant 4% increase on your rent every single year. It was just a money-making machine. You know, people got into it and didn't have to worry. So I think they're going to have to work for it. What, what do you reckon? You, do you think we'll have a cultural change to move perhaps to more online shopping? Or do some people just like getting out there and meeting? Maybe since you've all been cooped up at home so much, more people are going to going to drive out, you know, get out there, interact and meet with people. There is that social aspect of it too that we can't dismiss. The pandemic has gutted foot traffic in major shopping centers across the country, forcing multiple shops to close and putting significant pressure on rental income from tenants. Retail landlords aren't out of the woods yet. A severe six-week lockdown in Melbourne and restrictions in other parts of Victoria are set to decimate earnings as retailers close bricks and mortar stores and focus on online sales. Centre said it expects to report net operating cash flow, a measure of profit profitability, of more than $250 million for the half year, a preliminary estimate that is subject to audit review. The mall owner said it had liquidity of $4.4 billion in June and did not receive any funds from the government under its JobKeeper scheme. Macquarie analysts Darren uh, Leung and Stuart McLean said Centre's operating cash flow for the first half of the year was $365 million below the previous half year. Rent collected for the June quarter was likely to about, be about 39% below expectations, he said. 39%. But the group's preliminary operating cash flow was broadly in line with our expectations, they said. Structural trends continue to unfold in discretionary retail, which we believe will impact property valuations, consequ consequently placing pressure on balance sheet metrics, the analyst said. Australian investors mark centers shares down 3% in morning trade to about $1.90. And we could see right now, I mean, it's about the same thing, one ninety two. The mall owner has seen a resurgence in shoppers as it reopened stores across Australia and New Zealand in June and July. It released, released figures last month showing customer visits in June were at 86% of the level at the same time last year, with 96% of stores trading across Australia, although Melbourne's latest lockdown is likely to put a dent in the figures over coming weeks. So we will have to see how this manifests in the valuation of, well, centers property and just in retail property across the board and if if this has been priced in this has been priced in what do you think what do you think guys do you think it's been priced in do you think retail will be able to bounce back is now the time to jump in or are we actually we haven't seen the actual manifestations of the recession remember job seekers are boosted job keeper exists people are on mortgage holidays what's going to happen when all of those things get pulled out Will retail discretionary spending bounce back? Or are people going to move to more online shopping? Or it's just the social engagement that you have at shopping, which we can't do now pretty much due to all the social distancing rules. Is that going to be another nail in the coffin for retail? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I created, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next episode.